Paul, what's going on here? Why does AI have game, and what does that have to do with the AI alliance? Hey, when when you're fighting back, that, to me, that's got you got a game, you know. Uh, that's what uh, this alliance between uh, IBM and Meta has formed. Uh, basically, you know, uh, I, I think everybody's kind of worried about they're worried about risk in AI, but they're also worried about uh, too much uh, regulation and uh, too many licensing and things like that. It's going to clamp down on, on the innovation. So. This alliance is comprised of uh, uh, is is formed just to, uh, to to kind of you know take care of that and fight back a little bit with that. Uh, there's uh, 50, 50 members in this uh, alliance. I mean, it's a global membership. Uh, they've got universities, they've got startups, uh, enterprises, and uh, NISC and uh, different organizations. They've got. Within this uh, alliance, there's uh, about uh, eight billion dollars worth of R&D funding in there. Uh, and if you look at the students that are uh, represented by this alliance, there's about 400,000 students. And in terms of staff, there's about a million staff members. So uh, this this is pretty pretty large deal. With uh, um, the, the challenge is that the uh, policymakers are focusing on you know the safety risk of AI and uh, you know, we really don't want a lot of regulation clamping down on innovation. So that's what this is about. Uh, the alliance feels that uh, sacrificing the uh, uh, open uh, ecosystem we've got for AI in, in the name of safety just kind of uh, clamps down on the uh, benefits that we can get from innovation. So uh, I think it's a good deal, and uh, I'm glad to see that uh, they're doing it. Uh, they're, they're, they want open innovation for uh, open source and licensing and toolkits and data sets and standards. So uh, they're, they're looking out for, for AI and innovation and, you know, what, what's, what's to become of it. So. so I've been really consistent on my feedback uh, on this and also I'll try to, I'll try to maintain that. And I'm going to say what nobody's saying out loud. Uh, this is an alliance to balance out the equation with NVIDIA and any companies that, um, large companies with proprietary models. Yeah. And it's NVIDIA not only on the hardware, but also related to CUDA and the CUDA libraries and the CUDA models uh, that are there. Um, that, that's what this is about. Yeah. And it's a good yeah, mm -hmm. yeah the, the, the two, again, this is Gen 1 and it's the announcement. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd like to see networking providers uh, in this alliance. Now, there is a low latency ultra Ethernet uh, consortium on here uh, that, that AMD did a phenomenal do a job with a panel yeah. uh, where, you know, they had uh, Cisco, uh, Arisca, Arista, and, and Broadcom. They had Andy Bechtelshine like, yeah. on stage like, whoa. So yeah. maybe that's the answer. Maybe it's not. But um as as nvidia moves up the food chain uh they feel like they have to control networking because uh, in the end uh, you're delivering compute performance across um multiple clusters and multiple cards and then clusters of clusters uh to have a um a unified memory plane uh, to be able to uh, do the work uh, a little bit um a higher performance so and the other one i'd, I'd like to see more SaaS providers in there uh mm -hmm. you did see oracle you did see ibm but nobody ponied up to the ponied up to the bar uh, and said you know hey we're you know as a SaaS provider uh we 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 support this for our software i, I get the infrastructure part but we didn't see that and maybe that's coming and the degree of success of anything like this is, is going to be what what the alliance does right Beyond the press release, and 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 aside from the two PowerPoint presentations, uh, how do they segment the work? How is it measured? Because you know what, folks, uh, I worked for this company called uh, AMD a few years ago, 13 years ago, and you know the thought was, hey, OpenCL versus CUDA, right? That that's the answer. But if you're Nvidia and you are going at 10x the speed uh, of an industry an industry alliance, uh, you're going to lose, right? So, uh, and, and if you look at the the additive R&D of all those companies, it, 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 it is 
Uh, it, it is phenomenal. And by the way, not, nothing against NVIDIA. I mean, I would be doing the same thing that they would be doing. I mean, they, quite frankly, helped create the machine learning wave with, you know, University of Toronto and the money they would donate to universities. And Matt, I don't know if you remember going to the GTCs of, uh, of the past, okay. right? These, these boards, that university research uh, projects. And quite frankly, Jensen was trying to find something else to do for a yeah. GPU than play games and, yeah. and do visualization on workstations uh, at yeah. the time. So, uh, and it went from ML to DL to generative AI, and they built the platforms that, that all this stuff uh, was built on, and they deserve credit. Now it's sure. like, ooh, right? Uh, 52 week lead times or, or whatever, you know, the nine month lead times, and I have to write the CUDA. So yep. people just want more choice. And, yep. and I also think if we're going from 150 billion to 400 or 500 billion dollar TAM increase, everybody can win here. NVIDIA can win. NVIDIA, yep. if NVIDIA has 50% market share of a $500 billion TAM, it's like you're going to be rolling in the money. I mean, do, do the math there. Uh, right. And anyways, I've seen this, you know, we used to play what was called the virtual gorilla uh, at AMD, where we didn't have chipsets. We didn't have graphics at the time. We would work with other people who wanted to make money, too. We worked with IBM. Uh, so anyways, this is great stuff. And democratizing AI, I, I put this uh, up there.